Good evening. This week, Minnesota celebrated 162 years of statehood. From the indigenous people who have called this home from time immemorial to newcomers seeking opportunity, the people of Minnesota have faced great challenges over the years. Soldiers not coming home from war, bread lines stretching around street corners during the Great Depression, fierce floods wreaking havoc on communities, a bridge collapsing in the middle of Minneapolis. As our state starts our 163rd year, we face a challenge we've never seen before, COVID-19 and a global pandemic. COVID-19 has upended life as we know it. The virus has claimed the lives of more than 600 Minnesotans. Grandparents, parents, daughters and sons, friends, neighbors and co-workers. We honor their memories and we'll never forget them. We'll also never forget the countless heroes who've answered the call during this crisis. On behalf of all Minnesotans, thank you to the healthcare workers and first responders who continue to put their lives on the line every day to protect us. From hospitals to care facilities, these Minnesotans are putting themselves in harm's way to keep others safe. We must do everything we can to support and protect them. Thank you to all the other workers, the grocer, the farmer, the meat processor, the teacher, the child care provider, the sanitation worker, and so many more who may have been overlooked before, but now we find ourselves leaning on them during tough times. And the times are tough, Minnesota. Many of you are out of work. Businesses are shuttered. Families are struggling to pay rent. People are worried about making ends meet. The companionships we'd normally lean on to get through a difficult time, that hug from a grandparent, coffee with a friend, or that laugh with a coworker are forced out of our reach. As I said during my State of the State address last month, COVID-19 exceeds the reality of Minnesota's harshest winters. Seeing what was coming, we told you we weren't ready. We asked you to slow the spread of the virus by staying home. We told you we needed time to prepare for this fight. We have used that time wisely. We have built out hospital capacity so that we can ensure as many Minnesotans as possible receive the care they need when they need it. We have increased the number of ventilators and ICU beds for when people fall really ill. We've sourced critical care and personal protective equipment for the selfless doctors, nurses, first responders, and so many others on the front line of this fight. And we've launched an aggressive testing strategy with Mayo Clinic, the University of Minnesota, and our hospitals to test every symptomatic Minnesotan. Today, we hit our all-time record with over 6,700 Minnesotans tested. All of this work was done in partnership with our cutting-edge health sector, innovative business community, world-class universities, and everyday Minnesotans just like you from across the state. We know there's no stopping the storm of COVID-19 from hitting Minnesota, but we've prepared for it. We've successfully pushed out and reduced the peak of this virus. We've made great progress to ensure we can treat Minnesotans who fall ill. Thank you for your sacrifices. You've saved the lives of thousands of Minnesotans. At this point in time, Minnesota is staying steady in hospitalizations. With the capacity that we built while you stayed home, we can chart a new way forward. We believe that we should be able to handle an increase in cases as more people move out and about. We can use what we've learned about the virus and how it spreads to inform our next steps. We can take a measured Minnesota approach that protects public health and improves economic stability. This means a cautious strategic steps forward, and it means clear measures for determining if and when we need to pull back. We're not flipping a switch and everything's going back to normal at once. We're slowly moving the dial and introducing more interaction between people over time. As we consider what can safely resume or reopen, we must take into account three critical factors. First, how close are you another person in a given setting or activity? Second, how long are you in that close proximity to another person? Third, how predictable that setting is. For an example, you're walking past people in a hardware store wearing a mask, that's less risky and more predictable than setting for a meal in a crowded restaurant. That's the lens we're using when we consider how we can safely turn the dial. And starting on May 18th, we're turning the workplace dial. Non-critical businesses like retail stores and Main Street businesses can reopen if they have a safety plan and can operate at no more than 50% capacity. Small businesses are critical to the social and economic fabrics of our communities all across Minnesota. I recognize how hard this pandemic has fallen on them, and I hope this action charts a safe and prosperous path forward. We can make this turn of the dial and keep people safe if we can trust each other to continue to be cautious. We need business owners to follow the new guidance to protect workers and customers, and we encourage customers to wear masks, 
socially distance, and don't congregate for long periods of time in stores. As we look forward, I've directed my cabinet to continue the extensive discussions they're already having with health experts and thousands of businesses on future openings. I'm directing them to assemble similar guidance on how to safely reopen bars, restaurants, barbershops, and salons beginning on June 1st. This will coincide with a significant increase in testing, tracing, and isolating the virus in the state. We're also turning the social dial. I know this has been incredibly hard. Weddings, funerals, graduations have been postponed. The letters I've received from young children offering to cancel their birthday parties for others breaks my heart. Our social and mental well-being is an important factor as we chart our path forward. When the stay-at-home order ends on May 18th, we're replacing it with a new order that brings back more of the social interactions that are so important in life, but still ask Minnesotans to stay safe. Stay Safe Minnesota will still ask people, stay close to home, limit travel to what's essential, but we can now gather with friends and family of groups of less than 10. This CDC guidance in all cases is asking Minnesotans not to gather in large groups, all gatherings, whether a backyard barbecue or a religious meeting at a church, synagogue, or mosque are limited to 10 and require that social distancing. Don't get me wrong. We believe that the safest place we can be is at home, but we know we can't continue like this forever. So we're making turns on both the business and social dials in order to slowly and safely reopen our society. This situation's fluid. There's much we still don't know about this virus. And as I said previously, we must be prepared to dial back if needed. We will continue to follow the guidance of public health experts and make data-driven decisions. We'll monitor the rate of new cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. If there's a sudden rate of increase or a potential spike on the horizon, we'll move the dial back quickly and strategically. Whenever we make any movement to ease restrictions, we must protect the safety of those returning to work. Our state's healthcare workers, emergency responders, and other professionals are doing their jobs under demanding and stressful conditions to provide the services that Minnesotans need. These frontline workers and their patients, coworkers, and family members are at a heightened risk. As even more Minnesotans head back to work in these settings, we must protect their safety and dignity. That's why I signed an executive order today to ensure that all workers can raise concerns regarding the safety of their work environments without fear of discrimination or retaliation. As there is more interaction between people, we must protect those in our community that are the most vulnerable to the virus. That's also why I signed another executive order today to strongly encourage Minnesotans at the greatest risk of serious illness to continue sheltering at home. We know the virus rides hardest on people who already have health challenges. People who have lung and heart disease, asthma, diabetes, or weakened immune systems are more likely to end up in the hospital if they get COVID-19. We also know this virus is especially lethal for our elderly. It's already stolen the lives of so many of the greatest generation. We must do everything in our power to protect our older Minnesotans. Last week, we announced a five-point battle plan to protect our senior Minnesotans and keep this virus at bay in thousands of our long-term care facility. And now we're asking people who have underlying conditions and who are older than 65, take extra precautions. We're not requiring it, but it's strongly encouraged that if you're able to stay home, continue to do so. And for those of you who are asking to continue to self-isolate, we are committed to keeping you connected to the services, food, support, and companionship that you will need to stay well. We all have seniors or friends with health challenges in our lives. Take the time to reach out to them. A phone call, a card in the mail, or a quick text can make all the difference. We also know this virus feeds on existing inequalities. This public health crisis is exacerbating the racial, economic, and geographic inequities that have always been there. According to the data, disproportionate number of African Americans are testing positive for COVID-19. Since this pandemic struck, a third of the Native American workforce is newly unemployed. We must not look away from this reality, and we must plan for and lift up every Minnesotan in our response to COVID-19. In this state, we leave no one behind. Whether our workers, our elderly, our medically vulnerable, or our communities of color and indigenous communities, we will look out for you. Let me be clear, no life is disposable in Minnesota. Minnesotans, I've told you what we're doing on our part. Now we need you to do yours. It has never been more important for you to look out for your neighbor. We are still in the heart of this pandemic, and this can go in a bad direction very quickly. We must keep this virus at a simmer 
and not a boil. As a former teacher, I know a little about report cards, and a little over a month ago, our state received an A in social distancing. Last week, the state was given a D. It's not acceptable. Minnesotans, we pride ourselves in our exceptionalism. We love to be the best at things. And one of those things that we are the best at is looking out for our neighbors. We can, must, and will do better. I asked you to stay home. You did, and in doing so, you save lives. Now I'm asking you to stay safe. We're counting on Minnesotans to take personal responsibility for their own health and the health of their community. Stay safe means work from home if you can. Wear masks when you go out to shop. Stay close to home if you have to travel and gather only in groups of 10 or less and keep six feet apart from each of you. Get tested, which is available everywhere if you have symptoms. And of course, stay home and seek care if you're sick. I'm asking you to continue to take these precautions to protect your own health and the health of the people around you. It's never been more clear how connected we are and how our individual decisions impact the lives of others. We've turned the dial on businesses We've turned the dial on social life. We're doing that because we're trusting people to stay safe by making smart choices. However, we know that this will mean more people will get sick and some will end up in the hospital. We've prepared for that inevitability. We've increased ICU beds and ventilators for those who get really sick. We have masks, gowns, and gloves for the healthcare workers who will have to take care of them. We have strategies for protecting those most vulnerable to COVID, those in nursing homes, and those experiencing homelessness. And we have plans for eliminating hotspot when the virus impacts workers in places like food processing plants. But we've got work to do, work that we all must do. We must continue to slow the spread of the virus. We will test people and find out where the virus is spreading. When people learn they have the virus, they have to stay home so they don't spread it. We have to ease back into doing business, but not the way we used to. Employers have to implement new protections for employees and customers. We all have to remain cautious for our own health and the health of our neighbors. So yes, the stay at home order is expiring and the dials are turning, but that doesn't mean we're carefree and can return to the way things were. It means we have to stay safe, take care, care for our own health and care for your neighbor. Many of you have selflessly chosen to stay home and forego celebrating important milestones are taking long planned trips in order to slow the spread of the virus. Others have changed how you worship work, study, exercise, and connect with friends and family. And many more of you have lost your jobs, closed doors on precious businesses, and experienced real financial hardship as the virus has limited where we can gather and how we do business. I am grateful for those sacrifices, and I am deeply sorry for all the disruption and hardship the response to the pandemic has required. At each turn, we've tried to ease the economic impact of the virus with unemployment payment, business loans, and income and food supports. We know that in many cases, it wasn't enough. We're grateful to the generosity of foundations and individuals who are helping families fill in the gaps of rent, food, and childcare costs. I am proud of how Minnesotans have stepped up for each other, both by staying home and reaching out to those in need. Whether it's by sewing and donating face masks or contributing food to a food bank or practicing social distancing, we need all of you to continue to put the care and safety of others at the front of your mind. Don't charge forward as everything is normal. Unfortunately, we aren't through the winter yet. These last several weeks have been difficult and it's going to get more challenging, but we'll get through this. We're resilient people with deep reserves of courage, optimism, and grit. I've said this before and I'll continue to say it. No matter how daunting the challenge is, no matter how dark the times, Minnesotans always risen up by coming together as one Minnesota. It was our blood that saved the Union at Gettysburg, and it was the iron that forged the tanks that liberated Europe. Our farmers sparked that green revolution that fed and still feeds the world, and our imagination transformed medicine and is doing that today. Minnesotans, we're gonna get through this, just as we have every other challenge, by doing it together. Thank you, good evening, and stay safe, Minnesota.